Kyler Murray, Cardinals quarterback, trying to end a three-game losing streak. Would be a five-game losing streak, but for the Hale Murray play, which really didn't do much to to turn up. this team into the high-end contender we thought they were going to become. Nope. And now, a game that we would have looked at, Chris, several weeks. You all right there? What you yeah, got going on? You got a little issue with wire there? You right know, there? hoodie, just uh, getting all right, straight uh, there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I, just, I wondered. I didn't know whether you were performing some sort of surgery on your <laughs> neck uh, with you know, with, without the benefit of anesthesia. I didn't know what was going on. Anyway, uh, this game a few weeks ago, we looked at it and said, eh, eh, eh. Cardinals Giants. Now, all of a sudden, it's got some significance. And you could argue the Giants have a better path to the postseason because they're tied for first place and they hold the tiebreaker over Washington in the NFC East at five and seven. Yeah. So what's more likely in this Cardinals Giants game? Kyler Murray has 50 plus rushing yards or the Giants have three or more sacks. Murray has three straight games with 31 or fewer rush yards, Chris. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with the Giants have three plus sacks here. I am. I'm going to say they get the three or maybe more. Uh, hey, listen, it, it's hard, maybe recency biased, but again, the formula is out there. And New England coaches have played Kyler Murray already this year. And guess what? We got New England coaches playing Kyler Murray once again. I just have a hard time. Not that it's going to be like, oh, man, what a pass rush by the New York Giants. I think a lot of it's going to be like what we saw last week with the Seattle Seahawks playing the Giants. Russell Wilson's going to drop back and be like, whoa, nobody's freaking open. Hold on. Wait, would somebody come open? Nope. And then all of a sudden it's going to collapse and he's going to get sacked and it's going to be that type of thing. I think it's going to be more out of keeping him contained, but more out of, whoa, nobody's open and I'm confused a little and then get sacked. I think we're going to see a lot of that. I think there's a difference, though, from the Seahawks game to this game because the Seahawks may have stepped into a trap. The Seahawks may have not taken the sure. Giants seriously. And I don't think the Cardinals, especially after what the Giants did to the Seahawks, I don't think the Cardinals are going to do that. I think the best thing for the Cardinals to get themselves ready for this game was that the Giants beat the Seahawks because now the Cardinals are not going to to think that that they're the team that should easily win, that they know it's going to be a fight, and they may not have known that if the Giants hadn't just beaten the Seahawks. Sure, yeah, I, I, I hear you there. All right, so with all that, what are you saying? You think it's going to be 50-plus yards or three-plus sacks? I, I think that I have a hard time imagining Kyler Murray losing four straight games. I, I We need to look at the 2019 schedule to see if at any point they lost four games. I remember at one point they lost three in a row, and that was like, a match of his total college and high school losses yeah. together. Well, he was very close was to losing quite... five in a row right this year. So like, well, I know, said, I know, so, yeah, I know, yeah. but, but so, so five out of six, it'll be, if they lose this one, I just, I feel like he's going to find a way to rise up and, and overcome this giants team. And if that means getting 50 or more rush yards along the way, so be it. So I think it's more likely he'll have 50 or more rushing yards. Okay. How about the 11 and one chiefs now Whoa. back at the top of the PFT power rankings, which is far more important than winning a super bowl at the Miami dolphins, eight and four and the chiefs possibly peeking ahead to the week 15 showdown against the new Orleans saints. What's more likely Patrick Mahomes throws an interception in the game or Dolphins quarterback Tua Tonga Vailoa throws his first career NFL interception. Well, I, I'll say the first thing I'll say is th that the Chiefs better not like take this lightly. They better not because this this Dolphins team matches up very well with them. Okay, in a lot of ways, and this Dolphins team with Brian Flores again, we know being from New England, they know how, they know how to defend Patrick Mahomes and Tyree Kill and company and all that. I really want to say I think we could see both here. I would think with, hey, these corners and this secondary in Miami with that coaching of Flores and all that, that they give Mahomes and company a few moments of, you know, not driving the ball, being confused, maybe not looking great. I, I would think that happens tonight but I, or, or on Sunday. But I think if you're going to make me pick one, I'm going to go with Tua throws his first career interception. I think that that, that would make sense to me. I guess, I guess what I think is – the Chiefs can apply early pressure. That might make Tua and company have to throw the ball a little bit more than they'd like. And then this is a defense that does a lot of different stuff in Kansas City and gives you some crazy looks. It could be hard on a rookie quarterback. So I'll, I'll, I'll play that angle here.
Yeah, I'll agree with you. Even though the Dolphins have an interception in nine of the yeah, last ten games, not including four straight, hmm. they haven't faced Patrick Mahomes, who barely throws interceptions and has been very careful with the football this year. Tua hasn't seen a defense like the Chiefs in, in that you've got the versatility on the back end. It's, it's a good, smooth blend, level to level. Yes. You know, there isn't one area that jumps out. It's just a solid, balanced defense. We saw what they did on Sunday night to the Denver Broncos, and I think it's more likely that we finally see an interception from Tua. With each passing week, there's more film, there's more film, there's more film, and and Steve Spagnuolo and company cracking a code and maybe maybe giving him a look and confusing him, making him think something's there, that yeah, isn't that's there, right. and then there comes right. Tyron Matthew to grab the football, and that's that. The Vikings six and six at the rested Tampa Bay Buccaneers seven and five, a sneaky huge game especially if the Vikings should find a way to upset the Buccaneers. I don't see that happening. Frankly, I don't want to tip too much of my picks coming up later today. But what's more likely in this when Dalvin Cook has over 120 rushing yards or under 70? And we pose that because he's averaging 113.6 rush yards per game. That leads the league. And Tampa Bay is allowing 74.2 rush yards per game. That leads the league as well. So something's got to give in this one, Chris. Which one is more likely, 120 or under 70? Ah, man, it, that's – I mean, the, Dalvin Cook has reached, like, you know, unstoppable force phase, like, basically, as a runner. He really has. I mean, it, it's it's hard to envision him not getting 100 or close to it. By week, Buccaneers secondary – you know, young, talented. I don't know. I don't think the Vikings offensive pass formula is all that complicated. I'm going to go. If you're going to make me pick one of these, I'm going I'm going under 70. I'm going to do that. I am. I just think the Buccaneers are going to sell out to stop Dalvin Cook and just go, hey, the same thing. We don't think the pass game and Kirk Cousins and everything's going to beat us today as long as we take Dalvin Cook away. I think that'll be the approach, and they have the bodies and big people up front to do that. You know, back in 1998, Randy Moss's rookie season, the only regular season loss for the Vikings came at Tampa Bay. There would be some poetry in it if Justin Jefferson, the best Vikings rookie receiver since Randy Moss and one of the best rookie receivers we've seen, frankly, for any team since Randy Moss, if he could go down there and be the difference maker if they do sell out to stop the run and Kirk Cousins starts firing it in Justin Jefferson's direction and they can't stop him, that, that may be the only way the Vikings can pull this off, Chris. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it could be. It, it might have to be. I, I could very easily envision it being, okay, and Dominican Sue and JPP and everybody slow down Dalvin Cook. And, yeah, I mean, if the Vikings want to make it happen, they should get some opportunities against, you know, Carlton, uh, I mean, Carlton Davis and those corners down there to go, hey, here's Justin Jefferson, double move, one-on-one -on -one downfield. The, the, they have become more dangerous that way, your Vikings football team, as the year has gone on. And Kirk Cousins, you know, we probably don't talk about him quite enough. I mean, the big throws, throws, you know, degree of difficulty throws. You know, Kirk Cousins is phenomenal that way. I mean, every week we watch him throw deep posts and post corners and 25-yard crossers and 20-yard in cuts, and they're on the money. You know, he I, I don't see a whole lot of, like, four and five and eight easy, you know, eight yard, easy completions for him. It's like, it's screen to Dalvin cook, or we're going to throw a 30 yard completion. There's no in middle ground with them. And you know, that's hard to play that way, but they do it and they do it effectively. And you know, there's a, uh, people are comparing Justin Jefferson to Randy Moss, Randy Moss, that no. rookie year, it, it was deep ball, deep ball, deep ball, deep ball. Justin Jefferson's all over the place. He's making every catch on the route tree. He can do it all. He can. He's taking a lot of contact too, but uh, he, he has gotten better and better and better and better. And I just think if they're going to have any chance, it, this may not be a Dalvin Cook game. This may be a Justin Jefferson makes I, I his think, arrival yeah. game. I think that's it. I do. I, I, I mean, I'm with you. I, I look at it like, for, for the Vikings, if they want to win the game, it's almost going to have to be like, you know, their Bears game a few weeks ago when they played where, yeah, we ran the ball. It wasn't great, but just effective enough to keep them worried about the run to where now we think Kirk Cousins and company can make a few plays in the past game. If they can make those plays and Kirk Cousins, you know, we look up at the end of the day and go, man, Kirk Cousins has got, you know, 320, 330 yards passing. 
Yeah, maybe they're in this football game. Uh, maybe they are, but I don't know. Do you think that your Vikings defense can stop Tommy and all those weapons? Either? No. Yeah. No. Right. No. No. And no. Okay. We'll, we'll talk more about that later, later today in the PFTPM Chris Sims Unbutton Megapix podcast. But uh, for now, I'll just say no. Colts eight and four at Raiders seven and five. What's more likely? T.Y. Hilton has a hundred plus receiving yards, or Darren Waller, the great tight end of the Las Vegas Raiders, does. Last week, Hilton had his first 100-yard receiving game since 2018 when Andrew Luck was the quarterback, and Darren Waller had 200 receiving yards, sixth all-time by any NFL tight end. Uh, th- this is a, it's a, I mean, Pete's done a good job of making these tough here. Uh, T.Y. Hilton certainly looks good and like back to 100% himself. That was the Houston Texans defense last night, last week, though, and they, they're pretty crappy as far as pass defense is concerned. You know, the Raiders, on the other hand, will get in your face, can cover you man to man, don't give you a lot of easy throws. I know Damon, da- uh, Damon Arnett, you know, he came out of the game last week. I, I don't know what his status was. I think he got a concussion. Um, but I think in this one, I'm going with Darren Waller. I'm going to go Darren Waller has the big day. I guess last year's game, the Raiders Colts still comes to my mind a little bit. You know, the Raiders with that big offensive line and what they do, the Colts, not like the biggest defensive line DeForest Buckner's big, but it's not a huge D line. It's about a little bit more speed and movement and chaos and doing that type of stuff. I I could see Oakland giving them issues running the ball and then leaving Darren Waller wide open for play action behind it and those type of matchups. So I'm going to go with Waller here. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. I mean, just because T.Y. Hilton had one 100-yard receiving game for the first time in two years, that doesn't make me think that all of a sudden he's going to be racking him up left and right. I mean, Waller was just flat-out dominant, and maybe some of that dominance trickles over into this week. I still – yeah, I don't want to tip too many of my picks. I know. know. That's what I don't like about these segments. I feel like we talk too much. You get too much information. Steelers 11 and 1 at Buffalo 9 and 3 on Sunday Night Football. What's more likely, the Pittsburgh defense – has two or more interceptions, or Josh Allen has three or more total touchdowns. What's more like? How dare you disrespect my boy Blue, Pete Dimolitolitolitis? I mean, how dare you to think he would throw two plus interceptions? What are you doing? Um, no, this is that, that could very easily happen. We know the Pittsburgh defense and what they can create on that side of the ball, but uh, I'm going to go with Josh Allen and the three plus total TDs. I am. I don't expect it to be four or five or anything like that, but I think three is a very realistic number with the way he can play, the way he can run, extend plays, and and make things happen in the red zone or far outside the red zone. Yeah, I I think they can. I, I still have questions with Steelers against this type of team. This is why I've talked about with them where I just don't think they can beat the Kansas City Chiefs. This will be a big you know, eye test to just see how they match up to an explosive offense that's got a good system and a quarterback who can take over games. Josh Allen has gotten to that that category, as we've seen. So when we saw last week, Pittsburgh, when the pass rush dies out, all of a sudden, Alex Smith, there's people open everywhere. And that's where I worry about Pittsburgh going forward. So you're going to make me pick one or the other. I'm going to go with Josh Allen, three TDs. We know we talked about this earlier in the week. I look at what Josh Allen did to the 49ers defense, and I can see a similar thing happening to the Pittsburgh defense. And I'm going to agree with you. Even though the Steelers lead the league with 16 interceptions, and Josh Allen, your boy Blue, has made Bills fans blue a couple of times this year with two interceptions. Right. I just don't see it happen in this game. I just think the Bills are in the process of peaking at the right time. Right. The first glimpse of it it is what we saw on Monday night. They're getting these – primetime games and nationally televised games. They got an NFL network doubleheader coming up Saturday, the 19th, uh, where, where they're playing in the afternoon. And there's, there's just, an edge people, about people them right get now. to see them, yeah. right? People get to see them down the home stretch and, and they kind of like that. We're back. Remember the, the fourth year of the Bills Super Bowl run, it was basically deal with it. They're kind of getting that right. deal with it attitude. we we're sick of hearing about the Steelers and the chiefs and they get a chance to do something about it as it relates to the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, uh, plenty of good stuff there. And again, we will be making picks in every Week 14 game coming up later today. For- Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.